Let's see how you do under pressure. Let's see how you do under pressure. Give them a name to remember. Hey, let's see how you do under pressure. Let's see how you do under pressure. A moment can live on forever. Let's see how you do under pressure. Let's see how you do under pressure. Give them a name to remember. Are we stuck? We might be stuck. Let's go see. We are, in fact, stuck. I hope that you guys can hear this. It's just hilarious. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is why I haven't uploaded videos because my day goes like this all the time. Well guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I pretty involuntarily get my hands full in the bee business here. Yeah, great start to the first load going out to almonds this year. And uh, sorry, you can't see me. I was gonna, we were gonna load this during the daylight so I could get some video. But uh, yeah, truck found the spot in the road that uh, did not want to be a road anymore. It wanted to be a ditch. And so truck got stuck. We tried pulling it backwards because it would have been significantly easier and uh, ended up having to pull it forwards with the F-250 and the swinger. So yeah, here we are. It's dark and I'm trying to make a YouTube video for you guys because it's been a few months. We've been very busy, got a lot of new things on the horizon. Uh, however, one of the not so new things that we got going on is Almonds 2024. I'm zipping up because there's mosquitoes here. So pardon the audio. Uh, invested in some new gear. I got this DJI microphone, so now I should be able to bring you guys top-notch audio. So this guy still doesn't know where he's going, so let's turn him around here. Like I said, I was uh, planning on getting you a really great cinematic video of loading a truck, and here we are. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best to get video of loading this truck. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you got any questions about the process, drop them in the comments. Um, it's just cool to be able to share the process with you guys. I forget how not normal this is. There's gonna be 408 colonies on this truck. And we could do more, but the thing about almonds is everyone wants to get their bees out as fast as they can to get them back to split. So you pretty much get what you get. And step decks are hard to find. And you can get a lot of bees on them, but they're hard to find leaving California so we just do 408, it's not that big of a difference. On a step deck we'd do like a 456 or something like that. Depending on the hive configuration and the weight. So you can see we pre-stacked these, showed up early. That was the smoother part of the day, pre-stacked them. They're all pre-scanned with Nectar. So we started using Nectar technologies, which each hive is uh, RFID tracked, scanned. And what that allows me to do is track everything. Um, I can track each individual colony by queen type and what work was done, where it went, what specific yard it was in for a certain period of time. So I can track uh, where, what queen it was, if it was a cell or a mated queen, uh, if it was where it was mated, which yard it was mated in, and where it's been, where it made honey, where it went for the summer, if it pollinated watermelons or if it went up north. We better get this drop axle down pretty quick because we're going to get real heavy.
I just redid the lights on this Hummer B. This is the, uh, the old turbo. I think we bought this in 2016. If you know anything about them, they've changed a lot. They've also gotten a lot more expensive. Um, so we haven't ordered another one, but it's, it's getting to that time. Personally, I don't really like the Swinger 1K that much. I love the Hummer Bees though. I think it's time to get one with a joystick. We'll follow Juan around. So each of these stacks is set on a separate pallet to get them off the ground. We went through and switched all the pallets on these hives because California does not like ants. And if they find ants or any other bug, they're gonna have an issue. They'll hold the whole load up at the border of California and they'll make you pay to get the load unloaded and washed and reloaded and it is not cheap. I've shown Juan a lot of love. I'll show Chris some love. I just completely redid the lights on the Hummer B and just partially redid the lights on the Swinger. They need some reinforcement though. Swinger's got a Cummins or yeah, Cummins engine in it, and the Hummer has a Kubota engine in it. They've changed the Hummer Bees since to be a Kohler. This one's quieter, it's it is more powerful. The thing I don't like about the Swinger is the drive system is electric and it doesn't always respond very well to your input. And it also has a very large booty, just like the XRT. Bless you. All of our forklifts have the uh, old Peterbilt style brake lights on them. The long, they're like a 14 inch brick bar. Provides a real nice even vertical light. We've thought a lot about the whole setup and uh, figured out what we like and what we don't like, what we need. The Hummer B just got expanded metal in front of the whole setup to protect it. The Hummer Bee is also designed so that if the lights hit anything, they actually bend, they, they, they will turn away. And the, uh, the Swinger, they're just welded to the mast. But as you can see, not that far in and we're almost done. 
does not take that long at all with two lifts. Even with one, you can get it done pretty quick. Take a look at these bugs. It's cold out, so they are not wanting to play. These are playing over here. Go back, check on Juan over here. Nice straight rows. See all our nectar tags on there? I think I got distracted. Kind of hard to see in the dark here, but so these tags are actually, they got QR on them. They are uh, labeled with an ID, but they also have RFID on them. So I've got a handheld RFID scanner. It's a little bit of added time. I mean, there's not gonna be uh, any sort of like, there's not anything out there that's gonna do what this does that's not gonna add work to your workflow. It's just a matter of how much and the uh, ROI. Um, Nectar's not cheap. It's definitely an investment. It's something that, you know, I'm trusting that this is gonna make me better at my job, but I have to use it correctly for it to make me better at my job, so. There's a lot of things out there like that, um, but this just really fits what I wanted. For operation and uh, yeah being able to keep track of where hives have been is a big one obviously keeping track of treatments and feedings and subs uh, you know supplement all that is really helpful um, keeping track of how much honey is produced but the biggest thing for me is these hives get mixed up you know they these all came from different yards. They all came to a holding yard, and now they're getting put on a semi together, 408 of them. So they get mixed up and it's hard to figure out. I mean, you can kind of figure out, okay, this load came from these yards. But if you want to look back, you have a specific group of hives that are not doing very well. In the past, that's been very difficult without specifically marking boxes, and no one wants to mark up their boxes like that. So. I mean, every year you're gonna make new colonies and you're gonna split them and you start over and you have all this paint or all these markings. It just doesn't work. So the tag system, especially being RFID and uh, all the guys at Nectar have been very helpful. They've listened to everything that, that I've had to say and, and they do their best to improve based on what commercial beekeepers want and need uh, their, their target audience, target customer is the commercial beekeeper so yeah really excited to move forward with them unfortunately the bee informed partnership they uh, have uh, financial issues they fired all of their or let go all of their tech team um, which really sucks a lot of those people were friends of mine and uh, really enjoyed working with the bee informed partnership they taught me a lot and as you guys saw previously on previous videos, uh, 
I kind of teamed up to do something very similar to this, just, just a, on a group of percentage of the hives. Uh, but yeah, it sucks. They don't exist anymore. So we basically took what we were spending on them, what we were spending on our other app, and it was not that much more of an investment. The investment was really in the hardware, the tags, tag holders, and the RFID scanner. So yeah, we'll keep you guys posted as we, uh, as I work with that this year and get data from that, I'm really excited to see what it tells me. Just like that, guys. Last stack for this side. 408. Now we throw the net on and start strapping. Yeah, you better get that tighter. I don't know if you can tell the expanded metal that I installed on this, this lift here. There's 204 on this side and 204 on the other side. So what happens next, you guys have seen in my videos before, but we'll throw a net on them. And uh, that net basically just keeps them from leaving the load at any point during the, the ride, but any, uh, Oh, sorry guys. Any good driver is gonna keep keep moving besides getting fuel. Uh, B haulers actually have um, exemptions on the road compared to normal CDL drivers, so um, they're gonna keep it going. They're gonna go for the cooler weather, typically. Uh, it just depends, you gotta check. There's two ways there from Texas, and you gotta see uh, how the weather is. You don't want it to be, to be too cold. You also don't want it to be too hot. Um, it's finding that good balance, finding that good weather for the drive over. Uh, yeah, these guys got to know what they're doing big time. You can't just trust any trucker. Um, these guys get paid a premium typically, and that's why. Because, you know, you value 408 colonies. Anybody can do that math, um, but it's what you value them at. For us, their value is really priceless because these 408 colonies not only are they going to go make us uh, pollination income by 408, um, but also they're going to come home and make somewhere around 800 colonies when they get home. And those 800 colonies are going to make, uh, figure on a, a decent year, 30, 40 pounds of honey for us as a split whenever we split them. Um, and so start to value all that up and then you, you just keep going down the line. We've got pollination in the summer and if you lose a load it's more than just the value of the box or the value of if you were to just buy the colony outright. Uh, you know you can you can purchase a semi load of bees for 190, 100, 190, 195, 200 bucks a colony on the high end um, after almonds 
Uh, and before almonds, it can range. I've seen them for 260, 270. It just depends on how desperate people are to sell. Uh, but you can't just value this load at the inherent value of the colony. You've got to value it uh, as what the bugs are worth to your operation. And for different people, that's different. You know, these Florida guys that sell loads every year, they'll make the, the pollination income, and then they turn around and sell them for 185, 190 bucks, um, which we, we purchased a load last year, as you guys saw, at 100 and I think 90 bucks. And yeah, so you can, you can easily put a value on one of their loads, but for us, it's what these bugs are gonna provide for the rest of the year, so. See our guys pulling the net. Now's a good time to go check out these lights. Back down my exposure here so you can see. These are all from Amazon. So you can see the expanded metal. Well, I got 2% on the battery here and I don't know when the recording cut off because I was walking around. But we're gonna net up this load. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna end off this video here. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the longer video, more of the point of view explaining what's going on video. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this load buttoned up and go to bed. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, like the video, comment below if you got any questions on what's going on, and we'll see you in the next video.